What's up, everybody? Welcome to Show Me the Meaning Wise Cracks Movie Podcast. Oh, okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> Show me the meaning! That's what I was looking for. Uh, my name is Jared. Joined here with the Show Me the Meaning crew, we got Greg. Hey! And Austin. Yo! So Ryan is at Burning Man right now, so if any of you guys are burners and you're listening to this podcast... Go seek out Ryan. Tell him what's up. <laughs> so today we got something special. So as I said before, we we're looking to do something special for you guys uh, really helping us out and giving us those 500 views on iTunes. We're up to like 572 right now. So keep rolling them in, guys. Really means a lot to us. Really looks good. Really helps with that that iTunes algorithm BS. You know how it is. Uh, so we told you guys that we would be doing a bad movie. Just kind of experimenting a little bit. So we went to Twitter and we asked our fans what horror. Or, I, I actually thought that the, I actually thought that the poll said which do you guys think is the worst movie ever made, but turns out it actually just said which movie would you like us to talk about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, really? Yeah. So this one won. Idiocracy so won. We, we kind of pulled a prank on people. We kind of pulled a prank knowing. on people, and I told <laughs> and, and Austin came up with this one. This is Austin's pick for the worst movie ever made. Idiocracy. Yeah. So Austin, I'm gonna want you to back that up, but oh, I got ar- I got arguments. You okay, just you wait. got arguments all day. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well then, usually we st- all right. Well, let me just say today we're talking about Idiocracy, the 2006 movie written and directed by Mike Judge, starring Luke Wilson and Maya Rudolph. So, let's get first impressions. Uh, obviously, I know what Austin thinks about this movie. So let's start with Greg. Uh, I mean, I always thought the movie was pretty bad. Uh, I remember when I was 26, 27. And my friends in San Francisco was raving about this movie. It was like, Greg, you got to go see it. You got to watch it. And I remember sitting down to watch it and just thinking, like, what the fuck is wrong with my friends? Why why did they like it so much? (laughs) Uh, Because I guess, you know, 2006, it was close to 9-11. Everybody was thinking, like, the end of the world is near. We've experienced Mm. a lot of trouble in our world already. You know, the, the early 2000s was like a weird time between 2001 and 2010. Uh, everybody thought war. I mean, we were, we were going through wars. Um, but everybody thought, like, America was going to get hit again. And everybody thought we were getting dumber and dumber, which I agree we are. But, you know, we are getting smarter and smarter, too. Um, but I, I don't know why my friends loved it, but they loved it. And I just thought it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> it was cool to see Maya Rudolph, and uh, it was cool to see Scarface in it uh, in the oh, beginning. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the, he's yeah, the yeah. Uh, what's the pimp's name? Uh, uh, upgrade. Upgrade. <laughs> you know, but uh, I like the elements Mike Judge of keeping it. it Houston, man. Yeah, he always, yeah, always yeah. got yeah. to, you know. <laughs> uh, but the movie, I mean, it, it's, not, it's not my bad. It's not my uh, number one shitty movie. Ever. I don't even know what number one shitty movie it is for me, but it wasn't that. It was bad, but not that bad. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? It's Austin's job to convince us it's bad. We can love it yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Oh, do you love yeah. it? Let me hear No, I, I don't love it, but, uh, <laughs> but all right, Austin, just tell us what it was like the first time you watched it and uh, why, without going into extreme detail, why you think it's so bad. Okay, so I actually just watched it for the first time a couple months back for mm, okay. the I Dig This Movie podcast that I do. My buddy Keir recommended it because he said, you know, people are talking about how this film was super prescient and it predicted Donald Trump's election with, like, this TV celebrity guy, you know, and that's Terry Crews's figure and yeah. people kind of becoming dumber because they're just repeating information and they're not actually learning how to think for themselves, and blah, 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 blah. So there was all this hype, and then I had been I'd been hearing about it for so long. So I watched it, and I was like, serious man what the fuck is wrong with everyone who loves this movie and i'll tell you why i think that in a minute but i think this movie is really bad on all fronts and i think it's proportionally worse than bad movies that are objectively bad not that this is like a poorly made film i think it is but it's not that it's objectively the worst made film or the worst acted film or the worst designed film but i think that proportionally compared to The inputs of expectation versus the outputs of what you get and what it does. I think this movie is fucking terrible. And I'm angry that you made me watch it again (laughs) in such a short short span of time. I think you and I have a different (laughs) philosophy on what makes the worst movie ever. To me, what's really important for the worst movie ever is there has to be grand ambition that has to completely face plant. And it has to be a movie that it's not fun to watch. Like Jupiter Ascending? 
Well, even that movie <laughs> is kind of fun to watch because it's so bad, but there are certain movies that are think that they're profound, but every time you watch it, you just roll your eyes. It's not even funny. It's not entertaining. It's just somebody kill me. Like, you know, The Room can't be the worst movie ever made because people love watching it. True. So... Anyway, as far as this movie, I actually, similar to Austin, saw it for the first time pretty recently. People would always tell me that I have to see this movie not only because, yeah, everyone's saying that, oh, idiocracy, it's become true, but mostly because the main character's name is Joe Bowers, which is one letter away from my dad's name. Because <laughs> my dad's name is Joe, my last name is Bauer, and uh, so, you know, it, it easily could become an inside joke in that, like, you know, this this uh, very average guy becomes the smartest man in the world or whatever. Uh, so I saw it a couple weeks ago, and I was pretty disappointed because everyone said it's so prescient. So I was really expecting right. – I mean, of course, I wasn't expecting it to be like network, like yeah. that level of um, prophetic. But I was at least expecting to see th – the whole reason why the world becomes this way, at least according to the movie, is you know just basically stupid people breed more than smart people. I mean, it's funny, but I feel like we are living – in a dystopia for a lot of different reasons than that and i was hoping that it would touch a little bit more on that that would be really prescient but i don't think it really landed on that so i saw it a couple weeks ago i saw it again yesterday i, I actually was able to like it a little bit more yesterday yeah. because i wasn't expecting it to you know to, to really like nail it so to say so i didn't really hate it uh but it's, it's goofy it's campy it's goofy it's a little, uh, what's the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it? Uh, it's a little Total Recall-ish, you know, like a little, yeah. little goofy. It has this, this play on that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think that the, this movie, it's just the idea, right? Yeah. It's the premise. Mm -hmm. It's the premise that people latch on to, just the idea that you go forward in time and it's a society run by morons. I think that's just generally what people mean when they say that idiocracy has come to come true. I don't really think that there's that much in the specifics that's that interesting but we'll get into it so let mm -hmm. me uh, start with a recap so the film depicts a society at a turning point in which intelligent people don't procreate and these stupids <laughs> and the stupid people the stupids the stupids, <laughs> the stupids. I, yeah, I like that <laughs> that's actually another movie uh and stupid people fuck like rabbits slowly transforming into god damn it i'm starting over <laughs> The film depicts a society at a turning point in which intelligent people don't procreate and stupid people fuck like rabbits, slowly transforming the world into a hive of imbeciles. In 2005, average military man Joe Bowers and streetwalker Rita get chosen for the human hibernation project that's only supposed to freeze them for one year. 500 years later, Joe and Rita awaken to find Earth a garbage-filled dystopia run by complete morons who only drink Brondo, a Gatorade-esque drink. Joe is briefly incarcerated and Frito, his horrible lawyer, tells him there's a time machine that can take them back to 2005. So Joe teams up with Rita and Frito to get to the time machine. The result of Joe's state IQ test label him the smartest man in the world. So the police take him to the White House where he is appointed Secretary of the Interior by President Camacho, an ex-wrestler slash porn star who is currently facing a famine. So he appoints Joe to fix it. Joe realizes they've been watering their crops with Brondo, so he convinces the government to start using water instead. Problem is, the Brondo stock tanks and the whole economy suffers, so Joe is sentenced to a Coliseum-like spectacle with monster trucks. Just before Joe is about to be killed, Frito shows the world what... Just about... Just before Joe is about to be killed, Frito shows the world that the crops are growing now that they started using water. The time machine turns out to be an amusement park ride, so Rita and Joe stay in the future, get married, and Joe becomes the president and vows to make being smart cool again. End of movie. All right, guys, before we move on, I want to give a shout-out to our sponsors over at Greats. So Greats is Brooklyn's first sneaker company. Matter of fact, Greg came into the office oh, yesterday, and what'd you say, Greg? I thought I was like, yo, those some fly kicks you got on. Yeah, that. thank I like you. The, so like for those of you <laughs> watching on the live stream, I'm, watch I'm wearing them right now. Great set. I told you, I said all my buddies that are into sneakers, they rave about greats because they're they're kind of cool, but they're also relatively affordable for sneakers because fucking sneakers are expensive nowadays. And comfortable. Yo, greats, size 11. I'll let Greg eat. Yeah. For... So uh, they offer men and women styles. Uh, they sell all the classic styles, what they call the greats. Uh, made the best for less. 
Uh, best sellers include uh, all the leather Royale lace up. Royale, you know what that means, Greg? Royale lace up. Okay, and Wooster slip ons. I guess those are the those are the names. Mm -hmm. uh, you can save fifteen percent on your first purchase with our code Show Me. So that's S H O W M E at greats.com. I highly recommend it. I got these shoes and they're really comfortable, and I just slipped them on and threw my other shoes away. It was a great thing. So greats.com promo code Show Me. Check it out, guys. Yeah. Get them greats. <laughs> Get some greats. <laughs> Get them greats. <laughs> That's the commercial right there. <laughs> Get them greats. All right. So, uh, Austin, why don't you take it away with uh, your first reason why you think this movie's so bad? Do you want me to just present my whole case and then we uh, can work it back? Sure. Okay. Here we go. Give me a couple minutes here. First of all, I know that I'm going to get mad hate in the comments. I can already <laughs> sense people furiously saying, dude, what, I mean, you, won, up. you won the it's poll, man. I, I, I know. I get it. It's a satire. <laughs> right. The problem is I think it was it has some things that are interesting that it's trying to explore. Right. The takeover from corporate powers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the uh, the kind of tendency, as Greg was saying, for people to maybe diminish classical forms of education, right? The thing is that's interesting is people, they know more things today. We know more things in the world, but we maybe don't concentrate as much on like long-term reasoning skills and things like that, right? Like I recently read an article about like the problem with skim reading and how we all are poor readers now because we just skim read things and because we just look at like 280 characters or yeah. whatever. And that's like the the primary form of reading and then that conditions our thinking, and so we are getting, quote-unquote, dumber in some ways. I mean, whatever. But yeah. So I know that there's an attempt at some clever satire. I just think it falls flat on its face. I think the acting is terrible. Dax Shepard is, like, really bad. <laughs> like, really bad. Is he like, even fuck, around? Man. Is he but, around what, what, what do you mean by bad? I mean, these people, you don't think he's convincingly dumb? You think he's too smart? He's overacting, though. Like, Terry Crews is overacting. Luke Wilson is just I don't, I, bland. That's what as Terry fuck. Crews does, like, though. Like there's a way, I don't right, know, like, man. You know I, I, but, this, but this is like, a, a it's, way it's a movie a of role. caricatures. I think that he, you. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm getting too wanky here, but I would almost <laughs> say that it's like, yeah, you know, it's the in the future when everyone's dumb, it's like extremely inauthentic, and everyone it seems like a caricature to us, but people are just literally emulating the things that they see on the screen. I mean, one of the biggest things about this movie is that there's ads everywhere and, like, the clothes that they wear is all just, like, logos. Like, yeah, they're yeah. NASCAR drivers. Yeah. I always think uh, Dak Shepard is, is, is bad in everything, though. Even when he Do was you? on... Was he <laughs> on, right, like... I, I, yeah. Was he on, what, what uh, that, road, that was TV right show? Punk. Yeah, Punk. Yeah, yeah. He was terrible in Punk. Okay. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> know who he punk. is. The dude... Uh, is he blonde? Tall, blonde dude... Uh, in punk, he's also been in a lot of commercials. He was really big in like the early two thousands, uh, but I don't even see him anymore. I've seen him in one like family friendly commercial with his wife and his kid, mm. and that was it. Yeah, I mean, I know Dax. He's he's married to uh, Kristen Bell. And yeah, he does movies and shit, and he goes on. I see him on talk shows every once in a while. He's he's steadily working all the time. But yeah. um, I I just there's a way to do a caricature. There's a way to play a character. And, and if it was the intention for him to just be an over-the-top, cheesy, unreal character, then I blame Mike Judge. And even even still, then that is to me is just... Yeah. I, so that's a small point. I that's see what you're saying. Criticism. I'm mounting a leaky bucket argument here, Jared. So <laughs> No, it's fine. I mean, do you, you gotta, mind, do you mind if I engage with you as you go through it? Okay, let's do it. Let's right. do it. Keep going. Okay. The set pieces are cheap as fuck looking. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Okay. It's like I mean, Chappelle's show first season. Yeah, but, but <laughs> yes. Come on, man. It's charming Texas filmmaking, man. It's not, El you know what I'm saying? Two to four million hey, if you, dollar if, budget. If you have four million bucks, <laughs> okay. you got to be better than charming Texas filmmaking, okay? Uh, but I did read that the movie was like canned by Fox, or basically they made the movie but like didn't come through on all the post budget, and then they never released it in theaters. It was actually the funny thing yeah. is you see that there's like Fox News jokes. Yeah. But it was actually produced by Fox, and I think that they tried to bury it because it was too critical of them. Or oh. that's at least that's the conspiracy. Uh, mm. But I don't know. I mean, when it comes to cheap special effects, you know, if you're shooting with a certain budget in mind, and then someone takes the budget away, you're just fucked. You know. 
Very true. Mm. Anyway, yeah, yeah. keep going. Uh, one positive thing I want to say real quick before we get too lost in the weeds here. Maya Rudolph, I don't usually think of someone as being like super fine, oh, but God. she was actually like really fine in this movie. Oh, duh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like oh, she, Maya was hey. She's still hot. she was good. Is she she's still hot? hot? Huh? I, I mean, she's mom. I know, I'm not even going to go there. She's still hot. She's still mom hot. You know what I mean? But like early 2000s, ooh, Maya. I guess I never thought, I never thought of her as being like super hot and then for some reason well, neither, in this film i was like oh neither have i which hot. is why now when i saw this movie i was like oh i get it yeah. like i get it now you know who daughter yeah. that is that's uh minnie ripperton's uh yeah she, yeah yeah i didn't realize she was half black mm -hmm. yeah dog my Saxon. um funny but, too so here's here's the meat of the argument okay uh so sometimes I take arguments not to play devil's advocate because I like to explore themes and concepts and ideas and and I don't I, I don't always know how invested I am always in the things that I'm saying in the sense that like if you put a gun to my head would I still be articulating it? I don't know because I, I explore more than anything but this one uh, this is like fully as sincere as I can be I actually think that this film is extremely petty and mean-spirited <laughs> and I think that it really just screams <laughs> I'm better than you, middle America, and I'm better than you, working class Americans. And particularly, I think that this film is, you know how some people say, oh, fucking elites in Hollywood and elites in New York hate middle of America. This film is a perfect example of that. It looks at the South. It looks at people with accents. It looks at people who aren't as educated as the elites on the coasts and says, you guys are fucking dumb. And I think it's extremely – I think there's a psychoanalytic reading of this, which we, I could maybe talk about in, in a bit. But I think it basically is an example of – that invites viewers and that is an expression of taking joy. It's a schadenfreude, taking in joy and despising the other, and you only derive your joy in despising and putting down the other, the less than educated, the working class. An American notoriously it's, it's hates the working you, class. It's interesting and this film you is an say that because Mike Judge is definitely not – among the Hollywood elite, would you consider, I mean, with Beavis and Butthead, and especially King of the right. Hill. King mm. of the Hill. Well, which right. is kind of like uh, a middle America favorite. Yeah, but it I, does. That's what I, mean, I kind of thought, too. It does still talk about that, though. You know, with Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill, it still has that segment of, like, I want to show you this and pick at it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, in the same sense of yeah. Uh, idiocracy. Yeah, but King of the Hill is kind of like, it's kind of like, you know how you can talk shit about your family, but if yeah. somebody else talks shit about your family, it's like, don't be talking about my fucking family. True. But it's still That's shit what King of, King of the Hill is kind of like that, whereas this it is, is, it just doesn't seem like there's any of that love. There's no, it's just pure, like, petty resentment. But isn't he, I mean, within idiocracy, he is talking about us as a people, us as a culture, us as Americans, right? I mean, he is judging yeah, us yeah, as a whole. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, but and I, I, think, I think he thinks he's trying to say, hey guys, let's be better ultimately yeah. but it just comes across super mean-spirited to me i yeah. think i i will agree largely with that austin one of the things the thing that i read this is this this movie is mostly just like bush era paranoia like you know when we have movies like the ricky bobby movie what was that talladega nights coming out <laughs> that, movie, <laughs> that movie jesus right. camp uh the documentary about like the evangelical oh, camps yeah. like we were all during the bush era just like yeah. frightened that oh my god the people that run the country are like nascar fans <sighs> who uh, are all evangelicals and stuff, and the evangelical bloc is going to control the country. And they don't really touch on the religious thing, but they do, I feel like the the whole thing is an extended NASCAR joke. Like, everything they wear is, like, NASCAR-related stuff. The, the Brano. The Brano, the um, even, uh, like, the, 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 the Coliseum thing at the end with the monster trucks is very... Yeah, I, I, I can see. It's like, I think it's kind of like the, oh, my God, people voted for Trump. A, I'm not Trump. Bush a second time. <laughs> nice Freudian slip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a Freudian yeah. slip. Yeah. yeah, people <laughs> voted for Bush a second time. We're, we're like going into the dark ages, which now seems like silly. Oh, you know? man. Yeah. Ooh, we had no idea. <laughs> no idea. But maybe yeah. that's Here's the funny the thing. Accuracy. I was talking about this with a buddy of mine last night, and Remember how they call them Bushisms? Bush was known for fumbling yes. kind of popular idioms. Where he's that Nuclear. one where he's like, fool me once, shame, shame on, on you. Shame on you. Fool me twice. You fool me once, you can't get fooled again. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, he couldn't even. Oh, hilarious. And, he's, and he would constantly fuck these things up. So people were like, oh, our president is dumb. We are a dumb country. We used to be a smart country, and we should be a smart country again. 
And then Obama becomes president, and everyone's like, he's a pedantic asshole. He talks down to everybody. He's an like, elitist. What, what do you want, up people? He's Negro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I mean, look, you said that you don't think a film like The Room can be the worst film ever because there are no expectations or it doesn't have any grand ambitions, which, I mean, I don't know. You saw the disaster artist. No, I some... think that The Room does have grand ambitions, but it fails in a way that's funny. Whereas there are some movies okay. that have grand ambitions and just fail, and it's just like you're just rolling your eyes like God kill me, like 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 student film kind of shit. Okay, I thought you were talking about Matrix uh, Three. Uh, I mean, it's bad <laughs> for that reason, but not the yeah. worst movie ever. True, true, true. But it fails. So, I mean, <laughs> objectively, in terms of like craft and storytelling, production design, there are worse films. I just watched three Uva Bull films, Oof. and they're, they're they're bad. I mean, actually. His film Rampage is not that bad, but Rampage? Um, Did House you of, see Postal? Yeah, dude. Have you have you ever seen any of his films? No. I, I he makes a lot of video game movies. Really? So like House of the Dead, like real shitty. Like don't even go to theaters. House of the Dead, Postal. What am I forgetting? Blood Rain. Alone in the Dark, or maybe okay. not Blood Rain. Yeah, he's made three Blood Rain movies. Are, Austin, I'm sorry, I have to bring this up. Are you familiar? Yeah. Are you aware of Blubberella? Yeah, that's his. Uh, he because he made like a Nazi film and Blubberella at the same time. Yes. So Blood Rain and Three. Blubberella is like the parody. Yeah. I, I sorry. I have to get off topic for a second. So Blood Rain yeah, yeah. Three is this movie that this German filmmaker Uwe Boll made, and it's basically just like hot Nazi or I'm sorry, hot vampire chick kills Nazis. Okay. That's like the whole thing. All right. So Uwe Boll said, "You know what? I'm a genius. I've got an idea. I'm going to set up a shot." film the shot of my sexy vampire chick killing Nazis, and then I'm going to film it again. But instead of a sexy vampire chick, I am going to replace it with a morbidly obese chick and just <laughs> film the same shot, but just, like, throw in some fat jokes. So literally by the end of production, he had two movies. It was the same setup for every shot, Whoa. but one was a, like, you know, semi-serious action movie, and the other was... A joke called Blubberella. Blubberella? And it's wow. a real movie that yep. exists. He's a German dude? German dude. Ooh, German's he's, bad. I he's mean, made like 30 fucking features. I mean, do you know why he was able to make so many features, Jared? Do you know the story about the tax shelter in Germany? Yeah, so basically, like, have you seen the producers, Greg? Like, the whole yeah. idea of, like, if you make something that fails, you can end up making more money? Of course. That's what he's actually doing, mm. or has been. I don't know if he can still get away with it, but for like the he 90s- They changed the, the tax laws yeah, but the, a couple the, years the back. Late yeah. 90s and like 2000s, he was making bank by making movies that deliberately failed. Mm. Yeah. Blubber, blubber yeah, yeah. Rella? And, That's blub, some balls, and they're, man. And they're bad. <laughs> they're bad. <laughs> That's balls. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. But what you kind of have that, to though? admire his balls. Uh, like 2007 you know? or um, something. So it's like the same, same as this movie. Okay. Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, hey, Germans are wild. I like, I, you know, I've met a bunch of like, I've, since moving to LA, I've uh, met a bunch of Germans working and shit. Germans are wild boys. I mean, from the past, <laughs> terrible. But you know, they've they've come to terms of all the shit that they've done. But they're still, they're wild boys, man. It's like Australians, you know, on vacation. You ever hang out with Australians? Oh, well, wow, Austin knows. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right, right you know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Australians are nuts. <laughs> nuts. Yes. <laughs> So I, be I believe it. I got to check it out though. Blubberella. Right. Blubberella. Blubberella. A real Ooh. movie that exists. All right, Austin. Let's keep. Let's stick with this movie. <laughs> keep it going. Maybe okay. we should have done that for so, the worst movie ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I think that, that his movies are just they're just objectively poorly made films. You know, um, yeah. for the most part. Uh, Birdemic is a terrible film. The Room. Yes. Mono's Hands of Fate. Those those are like sometimes considered the worst actual movies of all time. But here's my argument, and I think Jared, you kind of are making a similar argument when you talk about. Southland Tales or when you talk about a film with all of these grand inputs proportionally I think that Idiocracy is far worse than any of those other films so it's got a four million dollar budget mm. has a decent cast it's got a well-known successful supposedly talented creator everyone's talking about this film so the expectations are through the roof so what I think is that this is the reason why this film is actually really bad and I think it's actually really potentially damaging is that there's a huge discrepancy between the inputs and the outputs. And so the ratio between the inputs and outputs is far greater than a film like Birdemic because you have no expectations. So I, I, here's a little mathematical scale, and it's totally unscientific, but it's just purely to create a logical point. 
the gap between zero and negative four is not nearly as big as the gap between 50 and negative a million. Mm -hmm. And idiocracy is that second gap. It's just the input output ratio is radically proportionally out of whack. So that's why I think this movie's fucking bad. Okay. All right. I mean, I, I accept that. I'd actually be interested to hear if anyone lives in middle America if, is offended by this movie, because I do think that middle America claims Mike Judge is kind of one of them. Yeah. Of course. We're king of the hill. Of course. Yeah. Even if they didn't claim that they thought that they were offended by it, you know how we complain about fucking Twitter wars and yeah. how people have stooped to this really low common denominator for communication and they... Like, I recently called it Thought Chlamydia on Twitter <laughs> because it spreads like an infection and it's super easy and it's super common, but it's it's basically adults acting like children online. Like, yeah. like there's that one where it's like, well, can you give me a better argument? I'll wait. Or like the, nah, 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 nah. I like, yeah. I feel like that's the tone that people and stoop to on the internet. I'm like, motherfuckers, aren't you guys adults? Like, I thought adults weren't supposed to act like that. So... We complain about that, and I I feel like that that too is a similar tendency, as kind of what we see as the mean spiritedness in this film, and I have a big problem with that. Okay, so I want to break down some of the satirical points. I mean, if we don't think that they're actually very, uh, but let's like I'll bring something up. Let's talk about if it has come true or not. So let's start okay. with let's start with a favorite. Ow, my balls. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, I mean that's been true actually uh, with. Uh, I mean, Bam and all those guys. Oh, Jackass? Uh, yeah. Jackass was already a thing. I know, Jackass yeah. was a thing, but I watched something. I mean, I watched some. I was at a bar. Still don't drink, just at a bar. Uh, I watched something. They had a TV going, and it was basically just like that. Somebody was just punching somebody. Oh, no, no, that was uh, that was uh, the movie. Yeah, it was... Uh, uh, the movie that we we're just talking, the Boots Riley movie. Oh, oh, where oh, just like, oh, where uh, yeah, it just keep Lakeith getting... gets like punched in the face. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. That. But, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. I mean, look, dude, it's YouTube, right? Yeah. I mean, it's reality TV, <laughs> and it's YouTube. Hey, YouTube, we're on, we're live right now. But yeah, I mean, you know, but between like prank videos yeah. and like, uh, I don't, I don't even want to get into specifics. I don't want to start. Everybody just wants ass. to be famous, man. And uh, yeah, look, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Well, when I was in high school, my homie is in home is in. I mean, we're you know middle class yuppies from Orange County. So what do you do when life is good and you need to find some way to release your teenage angst? You watch skate videos and you go around and you videotape yourself doing jackass shit. And this was before jackass. There was a group. It was called CKY, which yeah. is this metal band that uh, like Bam's brother or some shit was a part of. Mm -hmm. But it's can't kill yourself, right? And then their big one that they did was called CKY2K. And that was right around the time when I was in high school. And so we tried to emulate that shit. So we used to roll around town in our minivan and cause terror while videotaping all of this. I'm sure there's tons of incriminating footage out there uh, of me doing stupid shit. And then we turned 18 and we were like, well, now we can get arrested for this shit, so we can't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I get it. Like, we were all into that shit, but then we became adults and we stopped doing that stuff. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I kind of feel like now that you mentioned Jackass and that kind of stuff, I don't. <sighs> Ow my balls is bad, and it definitely reflects on being stupid. But the whole like self harm thing, I don't really think you see as much. But you definitely see like just dumb shit on yeah. YouTube. Well, like Logan Paul, isn't right. he? He's one of the most popular YouTube stars, and his whole thing is. Yeah, it might not be tube, kicking each literally. other in the balls, but I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he and his brother, while they were sleeping attacked each other and punched each other in the balls or like there's this australian dude i can't remember his name right now and he's got like this this really pretty girlfriend and they prank each other by doing shit like this and then oh, he has like friends that. that he like have I've you seen, seen them yeah 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 they do like they punch she punches him in the balls or he'll be yeah. in the shower and she'll come in and dump like cold water on them or you know yeah yeah, yeah i've seen that yeah and or, they or like they'll other. be at the gym working out and the, the one buddy will steal the other buddy's clothes and like run out and then the guy has to run through the gym naked and then run out to the street to the car naked which is actually kind of funny <laughs> so the next but, one yeah i mean yeah. Uh, wrapped up in this discussion i want to ask if it were made today or if we could make the movie idiocracy be more accurate what would he what would he have done so for this one i would say that Instead of it being that people are just watching stupid shit, it's more that 
what we see today is we have the feed. You know, it's like really we are living Fahrenheit 451 where it's just that like it's literally just endless content scrolling and scrolling. And I, you kind of see that like when he's watching Al My Balls, mm -hmm. there's like seven All screens yeah. within screens. Mm -hmm. So there's always some spectacle that's keeping you entertained. Um, Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, even man. just like Facebook video. Yeah. You watch one video and then it scrolls down and you're scrolling down this endless content that Instagram. just keep on giving you those dopamine hits. And yeah. it's just, you can sit there I was there talking about hours. this with a couple of buddies yesterday after a really interesting seminar and we were chatting about how our digital spaces affect us. Like like right now, we, I mean, we're, we're talking. Uh, I'm in person physically in my room. We also are being broadcast over YouTube. You also like you can hear me in a in a space in Los Angeles, and then also I have a personal identity. I have a Facebook identity. I have a Twitter <laughs> identity. I have my own YouTube thing. I've I've got these other identities with other like uh, entities that I'm a part of, business things, academic things. So I have all of these like layers of dispersed subjectivity that are out there that are constantly. So it's not just the feed that I'm always looking at. It's even like I'm existing outside of myself when I'm existing here locally. And I wonder if, if cause then we think about it, like we're consumed, like, oh, am I getting likes on this post that I made? Or am I getting an email that I've been expecting to get back? And and our consciousness is so extended into this digital space that I think it, it has a, a strange effect on us. And I don't know if we truly know what the effect is, but it's um, it'll be interesting to see the long-term effects of it. But, but I think it's different though, if you're the artist putting, putting it out, you know what I mean? This is like, if, if we're artists and this is how we create art now, and this is how people respond yeah. to our art. I don't really think it's that bad. Now, looking from the from the other perspective, though, as just the the, the consumer, it's it, it's it looks kind of fucked up. But I guess we all are playing in this circle. You know, we're all rotating around this globe, and you know, we're all bouncing. It's it, we're bouncing ideas off of each other. But I see it as the artist. We're just trying to create, and we hope people like our shit. So we do have to check to see if people like it, but. But you also, have to like you know. form yourself on different platforms. You know, if yeah. like the medium is the message, then there has to be. I mean, this hits close to home for me and probably for you too. There totally. has to be a YouTube Jared, yeah, and an Instagram Greg, of course. And you know, it's yeah. who are you really? Yeah, Oof. yeah. And while you're at home sleeping mm -hmm. or writing mm -hmm. your next comedy set, where you're going to be in person in control of the art that you're producing, that digital version of you has a life of its own right. that is taking on meaning and making connections and, forming relationships. and maybe offending people or not saying the right thing or maybe making people happy and bringing them joy. And it's like you've got these split identities. Yeah. Yeah. And here's what I wonder, Greg. So like for someone like you, you kind of, especially a comedian, like your Twitter is an extension of your act. Your mm -hmm. act is an extension of you. And yeah, you do have a persona, but that persona is probably closer to home to you than like, like Tom Cruise when he plays Ethan Hunt, yeah. right? I don't know. And I'm, so, never know Tom. and so I wonder. <laughs> he really does save the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking around, right? So it's like, so it's like you producing content. I totally can understand that, but I think it's strange that every everybody on Twitter is like trying to be. A comedian yeah everybody on youtube is trying to be some sort of expressive artist and so it makes all of us into quote unquote artists True. but then that really lowers the bar for what art is oh yeah that's why you know it's a it's a bust that's about to happen but we'll talk you know i could talk to you guys about that forever or listen to your comedy podcast where you talk about that all the time. <laughs> I do talk about it all the time. You like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about that comedy bus. Yeah. It's coming. All right. Um, all right. So let's talk about Brondo. Brondo is basically the Gatorade drink. The thing that I noticed is that uh, people kept on saying, Brondo, it has what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. And they just keep repeating that. Every time they say that Brondo's not good for plants, they say, but it has what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. And uh, th this is a pretty frightening part that I think is actually pretty, I don't even know if I would say prescient, but accurate, and it probably was as accurate back then, is that people just can't see past marketing. More to what mm. Austin was saying yeah. about earlier about how people are like headline readers is that they just, people don't have the patience to really look into anything, to really question anything, to stop and think critically about something before getting wrapped up and getting outraged or whatever. And, um... Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I think, I think one of the things that worries me most of all too is is tied up in that is okay. So, 
what is the influence that has conditioned that? And so much of it is moneyed interests, right? Like there's an amazing documentary series by this British documentarian journalist named Adam Curtis. It's called Century of the Self. It's like, like it's on YouTube. You can access all of his shit for the most part for free. But he talks about, have you guys seen that? Century of the Self? I'm gonna check it out though. It's fucking legit. It's like three parts, but it's all about uh, the influence of Sigmund Freud on American public relations. So PR is something we just think of all the time now, but it didn't exist until the early, early to middle part of the 20th century. And it was Edward or Sigmund Freud's nephew, a guy named Edward Bernays, who actually invented this idea of public relations. And it was all about Freud's theories, like appealing to the dark animality of the unconscious to stimulate their desires so that they would buy more products. And this is a very interesting exploration of that shift and how that's led to create certain type of consumer mentality. And this film just shows that at like a hyper, like this is where it could have been really cool and there's some interesting elements to it um, because there there's some serious truth to it, you know? Yeah. Like uh, what do plants crave? Electrolytes. <laughs> yeah. I feel so what, like what, what would be the modern equivalent of Brondo? Like people eating Tide Pods or something? Oh, Jesus. I mean, it is, but it, it is like their Gatorade. You know, yeah. uh, but I do like it's it totally being called Gatorade. Brondo for LeBron. I can see LeBron having his own <laughs> energy drink. LeBron-do? Call, calling LeBron Do. <laughs> I can that see would that. Be awesome. I can see that actually being people just love it. Dude, too. people in LA would drink the shit out oh, of LeBron Do. Man, yeah, I can't wait to see this year. <laughs> Me too. All right, the next thing. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is I think another thing that's pretty relevant these days. Something that is. Uh, I don't know, it, it, it's a little bit of a di- conflicting thing for me or, or a difficult thing for me, and that's anti-intellectualism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- all throughout the movie, we can just see... I mean, they, they constantly say, like, you know, you talk like a fag, man. <laughs> they say and, fag so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, but also, you know, the, he, someone could say something really well-reasoned, really well thought out, and then someone just, like, tips their hand, and then everyone just starts laughing. <laughs> Um, I mean, that even blows my mind. Just like that movie was made in 2006, you know, and it's like 12 years ago. And they say fag in that movie so many times. It's like, I don't even hear the word fag anymore. Dude, never. Yeah, how fast does history move, right? It's like, crazy. Yeah. Say that never. Crazy. I yeah. mean, yeah. That's dude, not that long ago. It's not. It's not, man. I used to hear fag <laughs> all the time, and I yeah. never hear it now, man. Yeah. It's kind of beautiful. Yeah. And scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm with you on this one because even my criticism of this film could be viewed as a sort of pretentious or elitist criticism. And and I hope that I hope that it's not because and I know that the, I have that tendency. I mean, I am an academic that, you know, has a PhD in philosophy, so it's like, you know, I'm going to be a little bit douchey sometimes. Um Austin, just show but, your picture, man. Anytime you, you say something super smart, just just show your picture, <laughs> dog. <laughs> You're good. Um, but flex, so, man. like, just I flex. get it. I'm gonna fall into that <laughs> elitist tendency sometimes, and um, and, and this film, ha- so so I, I I'm torn, right? Because this film, in a way, it kind of like says, "Hey, everyone should be educated." I'm like, "Yeah, be educated. Totally. That's a very good thing," but. I don't know, man. At the same time, I don't think that that smarts and that book smarts are actually ultimately the the way to like human salvation yeah. or whatever. Like yeah. sometimes not going to school and that there are other forms of intelligence. There totally. are other forms of intelligence that exist outside of just being book smart. Absolutely. And, and even if you are going to put yeah. intelligence on a pedestal, I think that look like I would. I mean, anti-intellectualism is a problem, but for the people who that are anti like my dad is an anti intellectual like straight up yeah. you know and um i don't know like i don't think that the right answer is me just saying oh dad you know you got to get on a higher level you know you just got to stop being so judgmental and really just try to get on the i, I don't think so the thing, i don't really know what to do about this problem because i think that quote intellectualism as we know it has become very vulnerable to these criticisms because a lot of intellectualism is just too wrapped into how it seems like how basically how academic discourse can sound so wanky that the line between it and nonsense is like razor fucking thin. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately 
intellectualism is not immune from the regular laws of showmanship, of just reaching people, connecting with people. And I think that one of the things that a lot of the people that write for us who are either ex-academics, recovering academics, or current academics, some of them do kind of complain that um, at some point academics just became the act of elevating yourself above normal language, which it should be the opposite, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when you're is, dealing when you're dealing is... with philosophy, I mean, some of these fucking ideas, you know, I, I guess you just can't describe in regular language. <laughs> but that's what Greg and I have been, try, have been doing <laughs> for do fucking five years. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's 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 all good being smart and you know reading and and knowing so much information, but if you can't tell it to anybody. What the fuck is it good for? It's, yeah. You know, like, look, I, I as a comedian, I, I know super smart people, and I know dumb as bricks people, man. <laughs> and sometimes the dumb as bricks people say something that can just hit you so hard, yeah. and it's it's plain sense, it's simple, and yeah. it, they, they say it so plain, and it, 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 it takes effect, you know? And there so, needs to be, and there needs to be space for both. in the ter- in the definition of intelligent or intellectual for people yeah. like that totally. you know, just because people need to and you know it needs to be more about what it is than how it seems mm-hmm. so someone who doesn't sound smart might say something that's extremely uh interesting and acute and accurate and then i just think that the term intellectualism needs to make room for that it doesn't need to be somebody who you know quote Talks like a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think yeah. with intellectualism, too, is like we also forget about uh, people that can just feel shit. You know, yes. like uh, there are they're just intuitive like people. Yeah, intuitive, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's I mean, that's a super uh, strength, man, that a lot of people, uh, it's a strength that you can work on, but some people are just born with that shit. They can just read people, mm. see it all mm. over their face, know what they're feeling, and then they can connect with them on a way that, you can read how many books on how to win friends and and all that shit, but this person knows like, yo, this this dude is going through something. Let me talk to him about this. Let me put my mm-hmm. hand on his shoulder this way and look at him like, yo, I hear you. And they can right. connect to people, you know. Exactly, and and to think that that's not intelligence, I think, really limits what we could we could broaden the scope of what intelligence actually means. We can't just reduce it to an intelligence quotient. You know, the IQ test is a very 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 poor barometer of what intelligence is you know uh, having degrees is a poor measure measure of what intelligence means and it's based on a sort of i don't know we we think that communication is linguistic and we tend to think of things in visual terms because sight is like our primary sense but if we can broaden things out to different levels of sensation and different levels of experience and then i think that would open us up to different understandings of intelligence yeah. ken ken robinson do you guys know who ken robinson is sir ken robinson i know the name like a he does ted talks and shit like that mm. um he's an educator from the uk but he tells uh an anecdote of he went into this school and this one girl was underperforming and you know they they called her parents in and uh like the teachers were all talking about how she she was underperforming and she wasn't smart and they wanted to put her in a special class. And Ken, like he noticed something and he said, you know, hold on one second, let's go outside. And he put on some music and he went outside and he watched her and she started to dance and move to the music as they were outside. And he said, I think you should put your daughter in dance classes. And this day she's like a, some world famous ballerina. <laughs> and the point was, is that school in like the intellectual things of reading and doing math and arithmetic that just wasn't her thing yeah. but in terms of her body in terms of feeling music in terms of being able to communicate at that level she's a genius yeah. mm-hmm. and so you just have to be able to attune yourselves to these different understandings these different expressions of what smarts are of yeah. what communication yeah. is yeah so there's a quote I, re- I read this article this morning called where idiots dare to tread by matthew Grimm, and it's about idiocracy and uh he, there's two quotes here. I'm actually interested, Austin, you s- to see if you think he's giving them too much credit. He says, Judge paints a beyond dystopian vista of what happens when citizens cede their citizenship to become mere consumers. And then he says, like office space, it peels away the soft tissue of shiny, happy corporate placebo culture. Mm. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, because I kind of I kind of have talked about 
this dude in the past, the Byung Chol Han philosopher guy, yeah. um, and this idea that that we just live in this endless, like exponential proliferation of the same, and it's that banal corporate stuff, right? The banal corporate slogans, and that we kind of have embodied that. I I, I think that that is partially true but i don't know if i would say that idiocracy has some sort of keen insight into that i think it, it thinks it does it's trying to and i think that's where it's it's trying to be satirical um I, yeah i think that it would almost be stronger if these people like weren't so stereotypically dumb yes like didn't say <laughs> yes. dumb shit but it was just that they were just lulled into complacency and just numbed by the placebos of corporate culture but because they're all so like me seemingly like mentally handicapped totally. it, yeah it, it, exactly. like, I, I don't think that's that's not the real threat of the quote shiny happy corporate placebo culture i think it's more that people are just going to become complacent and just be you know roll go into this life cycle of just being constantly numb so you can just forget your day yeah Same yeah I, I don't even know if we're numb it's that we're like active participants in taking more placebos which is probably even worse so it's not numb and mm -hmm. we're not dumb in the way that this film makes it we become these accelerating causes of our own unhappy placebo consumption okay uh another thing so if idiocracy i, I want to hear if you guys have any like jokes or whatever you want to pitch for what would idiocracy look like if it were written today but one thing i would if idiocracy was written today it would have my vision of it would be that everyone has their own guru that tells them the news <laughs> everyone has their own literal insular reality like you know it's like you're either part of the channel five cult or you're part of the channel seven cult yeah or you know something like that yeah. i mean uh, yeah totally any, any any other visions of the two the 2018 idiocracy remake <laughs> go uh, go go super la greg what would, yeah. be, oh. the, what would be the la version <laughs> la version would be uh the la <laughs> church just like you know everybody you ever been to like a, a la church out here like a like a christian oh, yeah dude a christian like church no. in la i've only uh, been to weed churches <laughs> <laughs> my boy went to uh the justin bieber church <laughs> no yeah <laughs> It's like it's wild, man. It's just wild seeing like preachers with like sleeve tattoos and like. Wait, know, wait, they the... worship Justin Bieber? No, no, no. Oh, it's like oh, it's because oh. Justin Bieber's like super Christian right now. Oh, I didn't know that. And he has like his own church, and it's very like it's like a concert type church, and I don't know. I would see Idiocracy having having that, but having that within like all religions. Like you go to one church. But there's like a section for each religion at the at the same church. You know what I mean? I mean, I grew up right next to Joel Osteen's church. You know that is. Oh, I mean, yeah, I know how, that is. How, how do you how do you make a joke out of that? I mean, it's literally already a sporting event. Yeah. You know, it's so wild, so big, so big. Yeah. I yeah, like my churches. first church experience was Rick Warren's uh, Saddleback Church, and which isn't quite as big as Osteen's. Osteen's like. Huge, thirty thousand or forty thousand people, rockets, or something like that. But Warren's it, it used like to be the Rockets, like, it, really? it, yeah, it used to be where the Rockets played. <laughs> it used to be the Compact Center. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's massive. I mean, I don't know. I think it's funny when people try to predict the future to look at what they get right and what they get wrong, right? Like you were talking about uh, the video screen, and there's like the seven screens going on. Because that was the worry, I think, back in the day. You Mac he Max heads headroom is like mm -hmm. all of these. TV screens like we were so worried about screens I don't think we thought that it would just be like a device in our pocket that is attached to our hand all yeah. the time yeah which you know? is all the screens that we really need because that's enough exactly exactly enough. it is funny though to think so that, about that, 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 some of the things like like I like you know you go into Starbucks and you get a hand job sort of thing <laughs> yeah uh I was gonna say the the phone thing. I know that you're sober these days. That's gonna be my sobriety. Is like oh, the no phone. phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good thing, man. Yeah. Uh, all right. I want to quote the New York Times. They actually, within the last couple of years, uh, wrote an article about idiocracy, and 
They say nearly everything predicted in Idiocracy has come true and more. <laughs> wow. In the movie, the language is so coarsened. There are curses on billboards. The ones for this year's MTV Movie Awards read, Fuck the Tux. Yeah, true. As predicted, true. words are being replaced by pictograms. Kids are having birthday parties at Hooters. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Hey, sometimes you uh, might like the waitress, man. You know. In the movie. I thought millennials were killing Hooters. I thought they no, were right. Hooters is dead. I, I did hear that. Uh, in the movie, they have them and. In the movie, they have them at. In the movie, they have them at an overtly sexualized version of Fuddruckers called Buttfuckers. <laughs> Back in 2006, <laughs> Time wouldn't even have let me print Buttfuckers. In the idiocraciest <laughs> moment of the whole 2016 campaign, a Trump supporter who shoved a black protester in the face explained his candidate selection process to a reporter at MSNBC. He said, He's no bullshit. All balls. Fuck you. All balls. That's what I'm about. Though George Washington never said those exact words, he would have certainly <laughs> killed a man for saying them. <laughs> I mean, they do. They definitely do have a point. Uh, hey, hey, man. Is you know, hopefully we're not going to shit. I think everybody. I do think everybody. I know the feeling that everybody was having between 2001 and 2010. Everybody was scared, weirdly scared. You know what I mean? Very weirdly scared. And I feel like now. We're not as scared, but we do sense like something's coming. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's a lot of apocalypse apocalypse talk. You know, North Korea, fucking, you know, we had that beef and you know, I I, I you know, fucking burning man. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's like we, we, we live in this culture right now that we feel a shift changing. I don't know what type of shift, some paradigm shift. Uh maybe the the moons or the planets are aligning or some shit. But uh, I think as human beings, we do feel like something different is about to happen. And maybe uh, collectively, we're, we're kind of like, fuck it. <laughs> here's, a, here's, a, here's another quote fuck from... It, let's uh, go to a monster truck rally. Yeah. yeah. Here's another quote yeah. from Mike Judge. Uh, when someone asked him, like, you know, people talk about this movie a lot, saying it predicted our times. Uh, Mike Judge says, it's not just the election, but other weird similarities are popping up all over the place. Carl's Jr. specifically said they're going to have an all-automated store. And there's a fellatio cafe in Switzerland opening with lattes and, you know, sexual favors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then here's my favorite one. So Alec and I, and I think, Austin, you might have been on this podcast. Alec and I always talk about that the Marx quote as, like, first as tragedy then as farce i actually think it's the opposite it's first as farce then as a tragedy so here's a good example of this you know the movie the movie just called ass that's in the movie yeah. and it's just mike judge said the ass movie was kind of me distilling everything down to basics and the funny thing is we you know we had a theater full of people that we'd recruited and we had actually shot that ass and we put it up there and it was getting huge laughs and at some point i thought what are we doing? We should just release ass and stop wasting all this time for a story and stuff so that it, since it was literally getting huge laughs. I can see that. Yeah. I love the, the, the masturbator channel, too. I mean, the guy's got one I'm arm bait, that's I'm jacked. Baiting. I'm baiting. I'm baiting. Yeah. And, and the, the trash shit. I yeah. mean, as, as human beings, like throughout the fucking globe, we're just putting our, we're just moving our trash to different places every fucking 10 yeah. years. You know, like China has it. Then China gets tired of it. We throw it to Europe, and America's like, we're not taking that trash, even though it's all our trash anyway. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, the film has clearly had its finger on the pulse. It has some insight into a, a certain trajectory that history was going. I guess I think the reason that I, I get bummed out, again, is just that I wish it weren't so mean-spirited. We're already so fucking mean-spirited, you know? Yeah. And, like, like when Claire was on the podcast a couple weeks ago, she's like, oh, tell me you haven't, when we were talking about Gone Girl. And I was like, oh, but they're just, like, they're being kind of dickheads. And she's like, but tell me you haven't bonded over being mean about something else or towards someone. And I'm like, well, of course I have. I just don't think that's good. I don't think we should valorize that. And I, and I think I'm just super sensitive to that right now because all I see online is that kind of shit and then i'm super sensitive to it in public like when i see couples that are just like sniping at each other and i'm like jesus christ you guys are fucking miserable man yeah. like just mm -hmm. end it and walk away and go do happy shit Yo, man, like, you got... i just don't like sniping mean-spiritedness undercutting each other just resentment mocking if you're with your homies and you're mocking that's totally fucking different you know like there's a level of sincerity and joy that you can have by teasing 
this is different. There's there's something psychoanalytically perverse about this. It's this Schadenfreude that I think is just. I just don't think it's best for being a decent human. You got to go to uh, El Paso, Texas, Austin. I went to Texas. Uh, is last it all Schadenfreude? No. No, no. Texas was. Everybody was just so fucking nice, man. You know, just yeah, coming from well, LA. Canada. Oh yeah, yeah, Canada. I mean, I go to the yeah, Midwest. I go to Canada, yeah. and I'm like, if somebody trying to steal my money, <laughs> why, why is everybody being so nice, man? You got, you guys gonna rape me? You know what's going on? You I know. know but I'm I not know. used I mean, to I, it. Yeah, and I understand, uh, Jared. I heard you say I like Schadenfreude, and I think, but I think this is different than just like it's not like you know, like when you're when you're a sports fan and the rival team loses, and you're like, ah, fuck you, Eagles, or whatever, mm-hmm. right? That's there's there's a level of play, but then some people take that shit super seriously and they're like, I could never be a fan of Notre Dame, you know, because I'm a Buckeye fan. Fuck Notre Dame. <laughs> and it's like, it becomes like super real to them. Yeah. You're like, Jesus, bro, like, yeah. no, man. Yeah. Go drink some water. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Go drink some Brondo, bro. Um, you know, one yeah. thing I noticed in this movie is that we don't see a lot of females being stupid in this movie. It's all like males being like super... Uh, not even broy, but like, uh, just dumb, dumb, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, just testosterone dumb. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to like see Maya more. Fe- is, I wanted oh, to wait, see no, more she's, field. She's not dumb. She's not from the. Yeah, I wanted to see future. more female stupidity. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, what? Well, oh, that's smart. a good point. It is a, or, no, there's the <laughs> no man. Everyone can be the, stupid. Hey, look, stupidity is an equal opportunity I, I thing. I do. I I totally agree. <laughs> but w- look, man, women are better than us. Uh, I've come to that conclusion. Uh, Women are, you know, we're not equal. They're definitely better than us. Uh, They give birth to us. They kind of take care of us. And they they let us think that we're on top, you know, in like some weird way. Uh, Yeah. They they, they are, man. They're better than us. (laughs) Who run the world? Women fucking run the world, dog. (laughs) Your girl stop. I mean, your your old lady, the one you really care about. Stops like fucking with you for like a week. You're you're done. You're miserable. You know you know how to handle it. Women women fucking around the world. They just yeah. let us. Greg's girlfriend's in another state. He's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true though. It's true. They're smarter than us, man. They give birth. Uh, all right. <laughs> so last thing, I just want to say, like, what, what 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 anything you liked about this movie? What what did you think of the funniest parts? Uh. I mean, I thought the Scarface shit in the beginning was pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, we didn't even talk about um, See, our favorite Camacho, rap. the president. Oh, Terry Crews. I love that Terry Crews used his middle name back in those days. It's like Terry Alum Cruz, and then he, oh. he changed it to Terry Crews. Well, Ooh. his full name is Dwayne Alizondo Mountain Dew <laughs> Herbert Camacho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's right, because you take the name of a corporate sponsor because you get paid, right? Yeah. Oh, is that what they said? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think like at some one point the, the names are pretty darn funny. Mountain Dew, and then someone else has another corporate name, or yeah, they got the the star of Owl My Balls. His name is Hormel, and <laughs> yeah, uh, right. and then there's another person named Velveeta, and then uh, yeah, that's right. And then uh, the lawyer character, whatever that actor's, the guy who's married to Kristen Bell, his name is Frito. I can see that. Ha- I mean, in L.A., they have these car wraps that you can wrap your car. Yes, in the well, spots. I, I knew I knew girls in high school that were named like after cars yeah you know oh, that happens totally. yeah no i'm talking about the wraps though like they will like if they'll wrap your car in this like uh paint almost that your car will just say frito lay and frito will send you like 50 bucks a week to just drive around 50 bucks a week or more than that maybe to just drive around because you're just you're you're basically a driving sponsor yeah frito yeah people Shit. do that in la all the time I mean, shoot, all you have to do is scroll through Instagram and you can see a thousand people saying, ah, I use this protein shake yep. because that, that's how I get my swole on, you know? <laughs> get the money. Same kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, you don't even have to have any followers. All you're going to have to have is a car. And that uh, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> anyway. There was, there was this rad deal. I, I think it was, this, <laughs> it was this brewery in Scotland. They're called Brew Dog. Great beer, by the way. Yeah. And I think I think this was – I don't know if this was a rumor or if this was true, but this it was like if you get a tattoo in a visible space, oh. so it has to be like on your arm or on your neck or something. Like it can't be on, like a, on your ass. But if you get a tattoo of their logo, you would get free beer for life from the like the main pub or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I was like, wow. fuck, I would do it. It's oh, great man. beer, man. They got a burrito shop in San Francisco that does the same thing. And I know plenty of homeless dudes – 
with a, a burrito. Fuck yeah, yeah, dude. And they got a tattoo on their forearm, and they get free burritos every day. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. I think I'm going to quit my job and move to San Francisco. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, some, there's some funny stuff about this film, but I feel like the more when we're talking about it now, like when you were talking about butt fuckers instead of Fuddruckers, and when you're talking about these names, I'm laughing more now than I did in the movie because I think it's almost good, and that's what makes this film so bad, is that the inputs, it's trying to be funny, it's trying to be yeah. insightful, it's trying to be satirical, but it fails so bad because it's just so fucking mean, and I think ultimately it just makes us, like, pat ourselves on the back and derive joy so that we can just be mean again. And it's like, come on, guys. Let's just love each other, man. Yeah. I love it, Austin. Fucking A. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, this was the 500. Thank you guys so much for leaving us those review on iTunes. Uh, Greg, plug your podcast. Yo, check out my podcast, Black Stage. We'll probably change the name. Uh, again, but it's a dope podcast. It's all about comedy. I'm a stand-up comedian. I've been doing it for like 15 years at this point. God damn. Um, mm -hmm. And it's great. <laughs> we give the insight to comedy. We bring on all these hilarious comedians from L.A. and outside of L.A., and they just talk about their struggles, uh, their wins in comedy, and how they develop themselves in stand-up comedy. It's great. It's so smart. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot of information and just some, some deep shit. And uh, my co-host Bradless is an awesome dude, uh, Haitian guy from Miami, and we just we just talk about stand up. So listen to it; it's only an hour long, and uh, it's pretty funny and and good to listen to. Yeah, so it's called Black Stage. It's on uh, if you click on Wisecrack on the RSS feed, it's under the Wisecrack name templates or temp, temp, whatever the fuck yeah you can find it there so definitely check that out anything else you want to plug like your instagram or something oh greg comedy on instagram uh greg comedy.com uh greg the grouch and i also want to wish uh jared a happy uh month off man enjoy oh, it. you deserve a vacation. it thank you. you deserve it man you it's work been a hard. long it's been a long five years yeah man <laughs> have a good time thank you it's been a thank long you. five years yeah yeah <laughs> uh all right uh austin what about you uh, people can hit me up on Twitter and get mad at me for over-theorizing a film that's supposed to just be funny if they want. Uh, Austin underscore Hayden. You love it. I also do a philosophy podcast called Owls at Dawn and a movie podcast called I Dig This Movie. And Austin actually is going to be here in person. I'm going to meet him for the first time on the 5th, Wednesday. So looking yes, forward yes. to meeting you, sir. Yes, man. I'll be there. Cannot wait. And great. Uh, I wear a 10. <laughs> Fuck yeah, greats. Yeah. Look us up. All right, cool guys. All right, signing off. See you guys next time. Show me the meaning from LA. Peace. <laughs>